Good afternoon, good lunchtime, good evening, good morning, wherever you are in the world today. Um, welcome to the Photographer Academy and one of our webinars. Uh, I'm Mark Cleghorn. I'm going to be your, um, basically the host and just kind of doing a little bit of the techie on the side. We've also got Jay with us, one of our uh, video guys. He's actually going to be kind of doing some of the question board as well. We're both avid iPhone photographers, iPhoneography as it were, known now. So uh, we're really keen to actually see and listen to uh, Jerry's um, kind of presentation today. I'm sure we'll get some kind of great tip, tips and tricks. This is just a couple of minutes, kind of a preamble. This is just a bit of a preamble, uh, getting ready for you uh, to kind of go live with Jerry. Just checking everything's okay with the sound and so on with it. If you've got any problems, please let uh, please let me know. And uh, as I said, we've got today a, a great photographer with us. It's going to be Jerry Coe. He's going to be joining us just actually in a minute or two, so watch out for that. And uh, then we're going to kind of go into, as I said, uh, Jerry's screen. He's going to be showing some amazing images, and plus he's going to be showing us some kind of tips and tricks of how we can kind of get on with it and so on. Right, um, I'm Mark Clare Corn. I'm the training director for the Photographer Academy, once known as Photo Training for You. Uh, I'm also a photographer, even though most of my time is taken over by the Photographer Academy nowadays and so on. Uh, if you're unaware of what the Photographer Academy is, you can check out our Facebook page, which is the facebook.com forward slash the Photographer Academy, and you can actually get our brochure there to actually download and so on as well. We're an online training company for photographers of all levels. Uh, we're just coming into our fifth year now. Um, we've got 1,500 films on live today. Uh, once you join as a bedber, you can basically watch as little or as much as you want to in the kind of the time that you're with us, whether you join for a month or a year. Um, as well as that, you get to obviously um, give us ideas of what kind of films that you want and so on with it. So if you haven't done so already, go and check out our Facebook page, which as I said is facebook.com forward slash the Photographer Academy. Uh, in addition to that, um, please go across to the Footage Training For You site, so it's uh, it's still kind of called that for now until the end of year, but it's uh, the quickest way to get there is www.ptforyou.tv. The next thing is to uh, kind of just go into, we've got a, a Facebook competition week going on, so if you haven't done so already, get across there, um, because we're giving away hundreds of prizes uh, during the course of the week and thousands of pounds worth of uh, work and so on with it. So. Uh, I think we've got all our sound all kind of pretty going well here. Jay's actually doing the board. So at this stage, I'd like to welcome Jerry Coe. Hello, Jerry. Are you with us? I am indeed, Mark. Thanks very much indeed for that. Brilliant. Well, I'm in sunny Car uh, Cardiff here today. Whereabouts are you in the world? Well, I'm sitting here in Bangor, Northern Ireland, and um, looking out the window at a nice sunny day, but a bit blowy. Brilliant. So today we're going to be talking about iPhoneography uh, and your kind of creative take on it. How how long have you been kind of shooting with the iPhone or the likes of mo uh, mobile devi uh, devices? Quite a long time now. Well, it uh, must be about three years now, really, because um, uh, I suppose like all real photographers, um, nobody ever believed you could get a decent photograph out of an iPhone. And, you know, because we're all used to our Nikons or Canons or whatever it is. And um, uh, it was a friend of mine in the States, Dan Burkholder, who's uh, one of the early uh, people to take up with the iPhone. And, and he had, um, so whenever I contacted him about all these wonderful pictures, I asked him what he's doing with them. And he just sort of said, selling them, Jerry. So that sort of thought, hang on, there must be something a bit more serious. And so I ended up getting my iPhone 4, which I still have at the moment, but hope to upgrade the 5S very soon. Very good. So um, as far as the uh, digital work is concerned, I've, all, I've already had loads of questions coming through from people, which we'll cover at the end anyway. Just a reminder, if you're new to all this webinar experience with us, you should see yourself a little bit of a question panel there, guys, and you'll be able to actually drop your questions through for me to ask to Jerry later on today. So uh, again, if Jerry could just move a bit closer to your mi uh, microphone, just to make it a little bit louder, okay. if that's okay with you. And I'm going to hand hand over the screen so make sure anything that you don't want to show <laughs> is hidden um, otherwise the screen is going to be all yours so I'm just going to pass it across to you now and you should see a little box that comes up there and you should be able to press yeah. OK. Got that. okay excellent we've got vision and we've got sound so Jerry Coe take it away 
Okay, well, thank you again, Mark. Um, it, it actually is, is one of these interesting things, uh, taking up with an iPhone, and I must admit it has totally rejuvenated my uh, taking my photography. Um, what I have, um, I'm going to show here, the first picture up there you see on the screen at the moment is, is one taken in Spain, and it's been manipula manipulated and played around with a little bit, and I'm not going to talk too much about that, because what I want to move on to is where, um, oh, hang on, sorry, um, got it, where I come from. I, I'm a portrait photographer, I've been well known for black and white um, photography, I specialized in black and white photography, and in these sort of particular style of pictures, uh, which were Basically, you would call them high key. Uh, I always call them uh, pencil portraits because they tend to look more like a pencil drawing. They're printed on a textured um, old old style paper. Remember silver paper? You know, you print it in the darkroom. So that was where all these sort of things were done. And I just love this quality. I always like the light tones and things like that. But I rarely did color. I did obviously darker shades and um, low key, and then using some of these were taken on Hasselblads, some were taken on my uh, Nikon, and uh, sometimes they're, they're added to. There's extra things going on there um, with like this here, adding grain into it, and just trying to get different effects. Um, for family portraits, things like that, trying to get away from the standard style of portrait. So that that's really trying to show you where I come from. Uh, I will say I've been a photographer. Oh dear, it's it's awful to say it. Fifty years, you know. But I I, I really started when I was minus ten. Um, but I it's something that came to me when I was about fourteen year old and a 13, 14 year old, and it really been the passion for me throughout my whole life. It's been my job, it's been my hobby. I'm not only a professional, but I have also supported all the amateur camera clubs. I'm president of our local Bangor North Down Camera Club, and I thoroughly enjoy my photography, and I'm enjoying it even more now that I'm on the iPhone. These next couple of shots, um, now this one was taken in Spain, um, and it was after a big heavy storm one time, and there was been a lot of damage from floods, and as I had walked around, I was walking back, and suddenly the light came through these trees, and that actually is the next village to where uh, we had a place out there, and uh, one of these ones that I have always loved. The Alhambra, again, color I've done, black and white, but it was a black and white one that appealed to me. I just love these tones and these textures. And you can see where I'm coming from in the black and whites. This is an older one, a Hasselblad one taken in Donegal, and there's great big clouds uh, hanging in the sky. I was looking for the foreground for ages and eventually saw these rocks and that balanced it all up for me. Still life, uh, garages, anything, dilapidated buildings, still love doing that sort of thing. And then uh, this is, um, um, was it Pont de, um, oh, de France, I've gone and forgotten the name of it now. Um, the, um, but uh, again, black and white working on that. What happened with me on an awful lot of my um, photographic journey. Before the iPhone, um, I always liked to play around with apps, or, well, on Photoshop. So it used filters, used different things. It's, maybe it's the frustrated painter in me. I love trying to do different things. I can't really paint or draw, so I became a photographer. But I've always been associated in work closely with artists over the years, um, 
uh, I had my studio, but we also had a picture framing business too. And we're dealing with lots of the top artists in Northern Ireland. And I've always been uh, inclined to try and do something. So whenever you see a picture like this, this was originally um, a black and white image. And this was um, worked on in Photoshop. And oh, using different filters backwards and forwards and things like that. So in some ways you can see in a picture like this here, almost the way I started to move with the iPhone. And you'll see the way things are, have progressed on from there. Again, a very simple image. Um, big packing um, uh, containers uh, down in the docks. But it's really just been enhanced and enlarged up and a um, bit of extras added to it. But again, trying to go more for the abstract than, any, than a real life thing. Again, the, this is one was photographed in, it's a reflection on a window of the Harland and Wolf cranes. And um, again, it's, as you can see, it's been changed and manipulated and the actual photograph is was quite dull looking, but once I started working on it and all the different uh, things, I eventually got something I like very much. And again, another one of the Harland Wolf cranes, and this one here was a not a double exposure, but um, a layer within the uh, Photoshop, so that uh, you got the cranes, but the the max speed or act speed it looks like there was an old sign, rusting sign on a gate, and I like the idea of combining those two together and made a much better picture. So what started me, this is my, just not my first photograph with an iPhone, but it was the first one where I started to think even more seriously. What cameras did I use on this? This was a trip to Italy with a crowd of friends. And one morning getting up, I had my Nikon at my 300 mil lens and I was photographing a farmer basically over to the right hand side of the, the picture here in the fields and he was uh, uh, gathering up the, the, the hay and I thought this was great photograph and I was taking the pictures and what happened was then I took out my iPhone, I looked at it to see if there had been any calls, tried it looked um, to no no calls I thought oh hang on I'll take a picture so I opened up um, Hipstamatic and just whatever I had on it took two photographs looked at them and I thought they're not bad and so I thought right well I'll take a few more so later that day we went out I took pictures with my um, Nikon and then I was taking out other ones with my iPhone and I was starting to like the iPhone ones more and more. So the next day I went out and I took uh, pictures on the iPhone and backed them up on the Nikon and on the third day I left the Nikon behind me and just went out with the iPhone taking pictures. And oh, again on the fourth day again went to Siena for the day and left the Nikon behind I just brought the iPhone with me and that's all I started doing. And since that time I have never brought my big camera, my Nikon, out with me onto um, a holiday like this. I carry my iPhone, it's still, like I said earlier, it's still the iPhone 4, but about to change that, uh, hopefully. Um, but. I find I get, even with the iPhone 4, you're still getting the quality because you're doing things with these images. Um, yes, you put an iPhone 4 image up against a Nikon image, it's not going to be the quality. But if you put it up uh, and you've done a wee bit of manipulation onto it, I've done a wee bit of work onto it, um, you never see it. Some of my images I print up to A2 size without a problem. I have done large canvases, 40 inches square. I've done uh, panoramas, um, five foot, six foot in length, 
and you'll see some of those a wee bit later on. So that's really where it started for me and um, it has moved on since then. This is another one of the Italy ones. Anybody who's been out in Tuscany will maybe know these trees because they've been well photographed. Everybody photographs these trees. And um, again, I was trying out, and with Hipstamatic at this time, I, I was experimenting. I was taking all the combinations and trying to work out what I wanted with it. Um, and I, I, I've got it round down now. I still use this combination, but I use other combinations now. There are so many with it. Um, it's a great, great um, program to start with. Again, this one here is um, uh, it's a very famous wee white church in Tuscany, uh, Capella des, I can't remember the name. I don't speak Italian, and I can't remember it. should have written it down. But we had uh, the next picture I think I'll show you from view of it, but with taking these pictures and walking away, the glorious sunlight uh, in behind, and it was giving a, uh, a lovely glow to the sky. That is actually a, a absolutely straight picture. Uh, no manipulation, no nothing, just as taken in the camera. And this was actually the front view of it, but this one has been played around with a bit. Um, the church there on the left, and those are actually on the right are apartments, which I never knew about. But um, and I think right on in the middle, just under one of the tree, you can actually see a figure, and that's one of my other colleagues who were all away with uh, standing there taking a photograph. But um, this one here has this has all been done, by the way, all on the iPhone. I do not move any pictures for manipulation into or playing around with into the um, Photoshop. Uh, but what I will do with an image is, I know the cameras now with the iPhone are still getting better and some of the apps will give you quite a large file size. If you want a really big picture, um, what I will do is I'll move the image into Photoshop and then use on one software which is resize and uh, that's a brilliant I mean the whole um, on one software thing is is a fantastic um, range of, of programs there but I will use that to resize and that used to be called genuine fractals um, which I know nothing about but it blows it all up without destroying the image and uh, so that's what it'll do but all the manipulations, all the work on these here is done. A lot of these early ones all done totally on the iPhone. I now move it over to my iPad and we'll work on um, pictures there. This wee image, um, this, this, this a very simple image, basically black and white, again on the, on the road trip in Italy. Um, I took a series and got in closer to the tree and we did different things. Now this particular image has done rather well for me. Um, one, of the, one of the friends we were with on the way home, sitting beside him on the plane, and uh, he sort of uh, says, well, I mean, you can't really do anything with those photographs. They're not good enough, are they? And I got out the iPhone and I said, well, I'll show you what I can do. So I started to play around with it a wee bit. And initially, um, I blurred, I'm not sure if this next one, well, no, we'll come back a bit. I blurred the image, first of all. And I'll, I'll tell you about these different uh, blur FX is actually what you did. And it blurs the whole image, but then it's like you can use your finger or whatever, and you can bring back sharper points into it. And then after I blurred it and sharpened parts of it, I then put a texture screen onto it. And you can see there where the texture is. And there's a few extra wee marks now just above the tree. That's part of the, the one of the textures that you can use. That's a, a, a wee, wee mark. And I don't like that mark. So I was able to take it out. And there's another great app for moving things and everything else. So that was the, you might say, the first one. And then I shortened it a bit again, just as you can see now, backwards and forwards. So you've got that. 
and then you move it onto that where the whole tree is a lot sharper, the grasses have sharpened up a bit. Um, and that particular image there um, was accepted into the Royal Ulster Academy. That was uh, two years ago. It, uh, I had an edition of 10 and it totally sold out. Um, I had to do an extra couple of artist proof prints as well, but uh, that totally sold out. And I thought, well, that's great, but I can't do any more prints of it. But I'd, I wanted to enter that into uh, the BIPP target uh, competition. And so I thought, well, I don't want to use the same image, so I flipped it and added an extra bit of texture into it. And to, well, like a painter would paint the same thing many times, many variations on it. So I felt it was quite justified into it. And that one in that time won the um, target, um, VIPP target uh, fine art category that year. And um, so it, it won me a thousand pounds, which was very nice, always very nice. And the selling the other 10 pictures through the academy um, earned me a nice um, about 1,400 pounds there. So that was doing quite well. And then I've just heard that uh, well, just realized, going back to this one, a variation on this one, which is slightly further away, was um, picked for the front book cover of, um, uh, uh, what is it, Sebastian Falk's new uh, novel. So if you see it in the bookshelves, you will see that picture, but they have stripped in a figure on the left-hand side, and the figure's not mine. So between one thing and another, that we um, uh, picture did me quite well and earned me about four thousand pounds so far. So a pet to the trip, and maybe a few more to come. This one, um, very simple. I we had a bunch of flowers sitting in the house, and I pulled out the dead ones, tulips, and was bringing them outside to throw in the bin, and looked at them and thought that's actually quite nice. So I got a sheet of paper laid it down in the sunshine and just took two or three shots and that is literally a straight image. There's no manipulation on that whatsoever. Again through hipstamatic and you can get that you, you get the texture in there as well and you get that that border and everything into it. Um hipstamatic to me is a fantastic program. Um I love square images. Uh, having been brought up with um well, yeshiga mats and magnias and hazelblads and bronicas. A square always seems to work for me, and more times than enough, I actually um, will square a picture off uh, rather than use the full width of it. This we one, I'm just going to have a quick drink of water here, getting dry. <coughs> this we one here is of the new Titanic building in the background um, in Belfast and in front of it is the original drawing office where the plans for the Titanic uh, were, uh, were drawn up and I've been visiting someone and I saw, just came out, saw that and I thought oh I like that and uh, stood on something to get a slightly higher viewpoint and got uh, that picture and that has been not a lot, um, but it was one one of the apps I used was called Pick Grunger, and that's P-I-C Grunger, G-U-R-N-G-E-R, and that's really just putting a, um, a a mask over it to give that texture feel to it. Um, just out of interest, by the way, um, if you ever do come to Belfast or you're in Belfast, visit that thing; it's fantastic. Also, as well, the, the way the angle is uh, done in those buildings, that is to reflect the exact height that the Titanic was when it was sitting in the stocks ready to, uh, uh, whenever it was nearly finished. So that would have been the height over the drawing office as well. So it's an interesting uh, picture, but it's a brilliant place to go to. Simple, um, taken in Malta and um, just 
red door, just like the textures, like the tones. Uh, my wife often accuses, says to me, is it amazing you go away to all these lovely places and all you do is take photographs of doors and stupid wee close-up things and you don't ever take any nice scenery pictures? Well, I do take them, you know, but I'm not busy looking for um, lines, tones, textures. That's pretty straight, um, but the colors have been enhanced, all done again in the iPhone. Oh, one of, the, one of the things I will mention, and I'll, I'll talk about them later a bit, but uh, one of the best editing programs for uh, your pictures is Snapseed. I'm sure if you're keen on iPhone stuff, uh, you will you will see that and you'll have had that because everybody has it. And it's a brilliant editing app, uh, fantastic. And you can get it for your um, uh, uh, computer as well. So you know, um, you don't need a big expensive uh, Photoshop, well, Photoshop brand, I still use it. This we one, a very great picture in some ways. Um, I was walking from my house round to the camera club one evening, and this is actually on the way around, um, and I noticed there was a fabulous sky, but there wasn't, I couldn't see any decent uh, foreground interest me. Really. But what I did see whenever I came around was these children's wings. So uh, I was me lying on the ground trying to get the the C end of the phone, um the screen. It's very difficult obviously, you know, anybody who uses it and you use it way down low, you know, you're practically lying on the ground. So we'll have to invent a wee thing so we can see them better. But um I did this, I liked the textures, and then I added the, um, there was a texture of almost like a wall which was added to it, and then the colors were enhanced, and that really brought out, out the strength in it. And it's one of the ones I'm, I, I'm very fond of that picture. Now, this, the yellow tree, um, What's happened with this one is that this was originally taken on my Nikon. Um, wife and I were in uh, the Lake District. I saw this fabulous tree, loved the shapes, and I thought, wow, um, and I photographed it. But behind it all was, it was all green, everything. It wasn't yellow, obviously. It was green, and there was a lot of greenery behind it, and it just was lost in the picture. But I always loved the tree. So what I decided to do was I imported this uh, image from uh, the Nikon into my iPhone. I did what I did with one of the earlier pictures. I blurred the whole thing, and then with Blur FX, you can just rub again, like I said, onto the parts of it, it's like a mask, and you can see the sharpened image underneath, the sharp image underneath, and you just go around and pick that out. So once I'd done that, I got the tree pretty well back to the way I wanted it. I then put it through, I think it was Photo Forge, and I'm going to show you at the end the thing on Photo Forge, by the way. Um, and this showed actually um, the tree up. I then changed colors and everything and did a bit more. It, it's, not a, it's not a case of sometimes that you can turn around, you definitely have an idea in your head. You might know you've got a good photograph, but you're not sure sometimes the way it's going to turn out. So what I find is that um, I will maybe have, oh, could have a half a dozen, a dozen, 20 variations on a photograph. But it's like printing in a dark room. You go in and you make a, dark, a black and white print. And you look at it, you think, well, that's too dark, that's too light. So you go back again, and you print another and another, until you get the perfect print for yourself or for your client or something like that. And that's the way I equate uh, doing all these variations in Photoshop, or sorry, <laughs> uh, on the iPhone. This one, trees. I do like trees, actually. And this wee one here is... Now we call this Rihanna's tree, and if anybody, well, local Northern Ireland people will know what I'm talking about here, but if anybody saw the news item um, one time, Rihanna was doing a video in the field, 
and uh, it was a field of barley, and they were um, taking photographs. This is just outside Bangor, by the way, and uh, um, she was doing this here, and she was floating around, and in typical Rihanna style, I think she took her top off, and the farmer started to object. Not well. I'm not going to go into his objections, but anyway. Um, so he asked them to leave the field, and she did. And so ever since then, this tree has we rechristened it Rihanna's tree. It's a local landmark. A couple of branches have since fallen off it. Um, but again, this one here was, uh, I think, was with yes. This would have been done in Photo Forge. An awful lot of that would have been done. You're getting that texture, and you're getting the different uh, um, looks onto it, and then you're getting the color into it as well. It's quite a dramatic looking tree and um, uh, I, I must admit, again another one that's uh, quite nice. And here's another version of it, totally black and white. Um, but use this one here, there, I can't remember the app, but there's one of the apps has uh, like a Polaroid peel apart uh, film onto it. And uh, so I just fitted that into there and did that. And you can see all the birds up in the trees and everything else. This is quite a simple wee shot. Um, this was in Malta. Uh, we're walking past, and literally that is exactly um, what I saw. The red chair was sitting there. All those colors were there. All I have done is really put a border around it to make it a wee bit grungier and a wee bit of texture over it as well. Um, but generally, that's that is a straight photograph. People have accused me of going and find that red chair and putting it there, but I didn't. Well, it was, uh, just happened to be there. Lucky. This one is a very very simple image. It was. Um, in in Bangor, we had a had a new building going up, big ledger complex, and um, as I walked around, there were these big yellow boards um, surrounding the building site, so you couldn't get in. But there was the sunlight was hitting them. There was a totally blue sky, and the shadow at the bottom there, I think was uh, I think it was coming from some trees, and I just loved that. There's a really strong a vibrant sort of picture, and um, it looks fabulous when it printed large. I must say, I think it, it really does look great. Oh, this we one, Girona in uh, Spain. My wife and I had been um, uh, wandering around the town. We'd been to the Salvador Dali Museum, and then we walked. We decided to go up to the. Um, cathedral at the top of the, the hill, as always. So we climbed all the way up. Warm, hot day, and very sweaty, and all the rest of it. But uh, we're coming back down again. I happened to glance down this alleyway, and there I saw this nun standing there, um, and she was in this old long habit. And naturally, if if I had a my nick on, I could have. Shot the half a dozen pictures off before I got this one, but because I didn't have that, and the only telephoto you've got are your legs, so you have to run or backwards if you want to wide angle. So what happened was then that I started running, and the phone was in off, so I had to switch it on, had to put in the code, had to find my wee app that I used, forgetting that I could have swiped up and just used the normal camera. But anyway, uh, so I'm running down all the way, and I just managed to get this shot. As you can see, she's just about to walk into the doorway, and uh, I just got that one shot of her going in, and I thought, oh, well, that was good. Next few minutes later, two of them came out, and um, so I started following them down these streets. But because they're in such big, heavy, dark clothes, they stayed in the um, uh, shadows. So I never got another silhouette of the two of them at all, but um, it was it was great. And once again, another one of my favourite shots. Huh? This one is the Hapley Bridge in Dublin, and at the very end, I'm going to really show you um, a, a workflow on how this was created in PhotoForge, 
and uh, so I won't dwell on it too much. Um, but uh, the, I actually <laughs> I didn't put up the right photograph here quite because uh, the wee edges on the pillars shouldn't have been coloured either. Um, I've got the wrong one, but it'll it show you the principle of what I'm trying to do. Paris. This is again another trip away with a crowd of friends and things like that. So we had a good old time with them. And what we ended up doing um, was just wandering around Paris. And um, this is just in Montmartre. I quite like this we shot. Um, nothing much done with it. I think slightly enhanced in the colour, but that was all. Again, Paris. This one here is out to La Défense area. Fabulous if you love big buildings. Brilliant, brilliant stuff. Um, you can have a great old time out there. Um, now this we want a Paris again. I get accused of stalking, and um, it, it, it's all purely in a, uh, a photographic sense. But this woman walked past this, and you'll see the original image in the next one. But this is how I finish it off. I like the blur movement. I like the colours. I like the painterly effect about it. But what it came from was that. So whenever, and by the way, you'll notice the dog has disappeared. Uh, the red lead's still there, which uh, looks very good. But we lost the dog, but it's quite a graphic image now. And again, onto this one here. People look at it and you say, wow, um, what's that, guy? Is uh, somebody walking towards us? Yeah, looks like it. Or he's walking away from us? I'm not sure. But... Um, that's the original image, believe it or not, from that to that. So, again, it worked very well. Um, oh, this, this wee one, this is me. Well, I wasn't quite stalking in this case. What had happened was that I was walking along in Rome, again, with the friends, and um, I saw this woman walking towards me in the red coat, and I thought, oh, this looks good, and she passed by me. I turned and took a photograph. Now I was using Hipstamatic and I was using uh, particular apps in uh, the um, lens on, uh, those who know Hipstamatic will know what I'm talking about. Uh, it only focuses on very small areas and um, you can use it like a tin type, an old tin type thing. And the beauty of this is, I thought it would focus on her, but it didn't. It focused on the man standing in the corner, and that to me tells a whole story. I I, I like that one. I uh, it's just the you, there's a, like I say, there's a whole story there more than just a photograph. Simple black and white. Still doing my black and whites. Uh, by the way, the the date at the bottom of all of these things here, that's just what the, um, some of the uh, we, uh, uh, things in Hipsomatic threw up. Um, again, black and white, this was in, uh, where my wife and I were away on a cruise, and that there is up in the Baltics. Uh, that is the Sibelius Monument in Helsinki. This one again is Paris. I'm doing a series on industrial things using the the apps where there's only a part of it in focus, and uh, you're getting the old tin type look about it as well. And again, a similar along the style. And this is really what started me off onto it almost was uh, this is Malta. I quite like the idea of, of the um, cranes and the industrial field, so I started working along with that. And again, cranes, and that's actually in Belfast. Um, you know, so I was taking different things. This one, now this one is not an iPhone, so I'm cheating here, but I just thought I'd throw it in anyway. Um, it was taken on the Nikon, but it was uh, joined together. This actually is a 3D joiner, not in um, the um, Photoshop. Each individual one was printed and then laid on top of one another. So the, actually the depth of it is almost two inches deep. Um, and it was a real murderous thing to fit together um, when you're doing physically. Dead easy on the computer, but not so good when you're doing physically. But because uh, each one of those there's um, photographs is on a wee, uh, um, was about quarter inch thick, half inch thick piece of um, uh, foam core, black foam core. 
Anyway, what it really was uh, lead in. Um, this this doesn't look. Um, I think I picked the wrong one here, so apologies. It doesn't look quite sharp there, but <coughs> this. Uh, sorry. <coughs> um, <coughs> so this um, this is where I live, actually, not on the beach, but um, there's a white house in the front there where we live, just behind that. Um, but one night, seeing a lovely sunlight coming in through the living room, uh, I looked out and saw this fabulous sky. So I went out to take photographs. Now I didn't take that one. What I had taken was one of some yachts sailing, um, which are behind me. And then as I turned around, I saw this wonderful sky and clouds. The whole thing looked fabulous. So this is a joiner. And I know the iPhone 5 and the 5S, they all have their joiners where you can just continually move the camera across, and that will give you an, um, your, hip, um, your panorama. But I, all these here, I prefer to do it in ways of taking individual pictures. So there's probably about uh, 30 odd different pictures all taken there. And that's why you're seeing the unusual shape all around it. I like the border like that as well. I don't like it cleaned up. I quite like it like that as well. So again, oh, there's the Rhiannus tree right in the middle. But I loved all the lines in the field there bringing up. And both these here print up to about five foot, six foot in width. Oh, that was a 360-degree panorama of um, Bangor Harbour, and um, it's not wasn't a great day. I just put it in there, but I would like to do it again on a better day. Oh, and this is one from uh, Sacre Coeur in uh, Paris, and again joining up. Uh, and the only bit of cleaning up I did with some of them was down on the left-hand side. There were some people who were. It looked a bit strange. They'd moved an awful lot across them, and it annoyed me a bit, so I took that out. This is another one in Paris on the um, walking uh, on the underpass if you're going across to the Arc de Triomphe. And these two policemen were just ahead of me, and I thought there must be a photograph possibility here. So what I did was then I turned around and ended up with that. And I was experimenting with that one a lot too. I'd read a technique and I thought I'll try it out and see what happens. So I quite like the abstract thing about that. You can see where the uh, the frustrated painter in me is maybe coming through in these. Here's where we're moving into the painterly apps and, and styles. This is just a couple down in the seafront in Bangor. And uh, they're walking in front of me. I like this striped top and they had a red bag and her purple top and so using different uh, apps they're able to get that. They, this is um, the 12th of July in, in Bangor, one of the uh, Orange Order parades going through Bangor. Uh, it's all very quiet and peaceful and everything else but um, I quite like the, the idea, the textures and the, the banners. And this is actually was a wee girl um, and her parents and she was eating an ice cream but she'd got two flags to wave uh, as the bands go by. So they were sitting waiting for the bands to come along. This one, um, some of these are bigger of file size than another. But again, this one here is a room. It's outside the Parthenon. And there was a, it started raining. So I started photographing the people in their umbrellas. And um, then uh, the, the actual photographs were taken using what I, um, slow shutter cam and a camera and that means they're blurred slightly and then I put it through a, a painter app called Glaze. Then I put it through Pic Grunger and did a couple of other things. And on the top left hand corner you see a bluish car. It was originally white and it was very distracting. So I changed the colour to blue and uh, it sort of got that one. Quite like that too. This one here <coughs> was on the latest trip. We were um, went on a. I'm, I'm not a cruise person, but went on a Baltic cruise because these are places I'm not likely to go to on holiday. And this one here is in Copenhagen, uh, Copenhagen, and it's Niven, Niven um, area where the docks are. But this is just a straight shot originally uh, using the hipstamatic, 
but again, I put this through. I think it's Muka Hanga. Oh, um, it's uh, an app where you can get all these textures, and uh, I quite liked it for the sort of almost um, the, the the harsh um, black lines into it. Um, and it appeals to me that. Now this one here is to show you sitting having a coffee, um, and oh, the rain came on that day a bit. But this is to show you what the original photograph was like. And then that's what I ended up with. Um, it went through about four different apps. It went through Snapseed. It's gone through textures. It's gone through glaze. Um, now, <laughs> one thing you will find with an awful lot of apps is that you can be seduced into just using the app. And it's a bit like if anybody knows what Coke and filters were like, in that a, once you've used it once, um, everybody knew you'd use that filter. So you find that you may use a filter, and then eventually you start to say, right, I need to combine the original image, or I need to combine something with it, because you don't want it necessarily to be just um, uh, a one shot in uh, whatever the app is. I think you need to start adding more and more. And I find people that I know uh, who are really, really, really good artists uh, doing these things here, and uh, they're working through uh, different apps onto it. This one was a uh, quick one whereby it was um, a, a guy on a train on the subway in St. Petersburg, um, again using an app, Repix, and a couple of other apps as well. Again, I like this here, this character was a bit of a uh, down and out in ways, and this lovely yellow bike sitting there. So. Um, Again, I uh, think Repix and a few others. And again, this girl, this girl was in Talon, and uh, she was um, trying to persuade you people to do a bit of archery. And oh, this one, sorry, this one here is totally uh, out of the context, but this is an imported image from Egypt from a few years ago. Always liked the old man, but I hadn't got around to doing something with it. So eventually, I, I got using. Uh, textures and repicks again got this sort of feel into it. This is just to show you a quick um, thing waiting to go into Catherine's garden. These guys were all standing out playing. So this is the original photograph. Thought there was something should be here. So brought it into Snapseed, brightened it. But the guy at the back didn't like him because he was, um, you know, you can't see his face and anything else. So I started taking him out. Uh, I forgot a wee bit on this one here. I still had to take a few of his tassels out. But then I added texture onto it as well. Next one, I've got his tassels away. Playing music, added uh, another layer into it of music. And then a bit more texture again to bring it down. So that's the way sometimes I'll work through a picture quite quickly. Oh, I put this one in here just for a laugh. These two, they look like 13-year-old soldiers, but they actually are in Copenhagen marching up and down. And because I didn't have a telephoto lens to photograph them, I went up some steps to take this photograph. And as he obviously came close, he was saying to me, you shouldn't be up there. I never saw that gesture. I never saw that until I actually uh, opened the photograph on my iPad, and I thought it was brilliant. But I just love those expressions. Absolutely fabulous. <coughs> Sorry, <coughs> this is me back to the original picture again. After this, uh, a few other things, and I don't know whether, um, Mark, you want to come in with any questions or anything else in a few minutes. Yeah. I can show what, um, I don't want to run out of time either. No, that's great. If you keep on uh, going, Jerry, I think we've got great time. We've got loads of questions here anyway, but we can overrun a little bit. I know it'll take somebody over lunchtime, but we're recording day anyway. So if you carry on, Jerry, we'll, uh, we'll do the questions once you've finished. Okay, no problem. Um, <coughs> let me have another quick glass of water here, sir. Um, it's really a pint of Guinness, but it's not. No, it's not really, honestly. Um, the, uh, this one here was taken on a beach. Um, in Spain, um, coming along, uh, I just love the the mix of the chairs, two twos and twos, 
and there's one person sitting on the beach and nobody sitting on the chairs at all. Um, but I like the, the layout of the whole thing. I put it in through the, um, uh, I, I can't remember, actually I'll be totally honest, I think it may have gone through PhotoFord, but I can't really remember now, and the textures and various things that it went through. So, um, uh, but I, 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 I had warm versions of this and I had cool versions, and I preferred cooler versions. Um, I just, again, another one, that, it's simple, but it works. <coughs> what I have here, this is my iPhone 4, and this is just showing you my cameras. I don't use them all at all. The ones that I am really using at the moment, apart from, say, the standard camera, which is the third one on the right, Hipstamatic, which uh, in the middle row, top camera at the bottom left, but also the other one that is a fabulous camera, camera uh, 645 Pro Mark II. That is really got. It's like having a, a your SLR really in your hand. It's doing all the same things. You can change films. You can change uh, uh, how it view, uh, whether it's six by six, uh, six by seventeen. It can be a lot of different shapes and everything else. You can colors everything. Great, great app. That really is fabulous. Although I tend to use top camera. It's simpler but I tend to use it uh, sooner. Oh, and the other one, slow shutter on there, I use that as well um, for trying to do out some wee uh, arty things. The eye video, by the way, I use, um, if, if you just click that, it almost goes on immediately, and there's no fiddling around, so it's quite good, actually, that one. Um, me touching. Here's a, a list of some of them. So you've got... Um, Photo Studio I use, but not as much. Auto Stitch is fabulous, and that's what I use for all my panoramas. Retouch, that is a superb app. If you want to remove something, um, it's uh, content aware, you might say, um, for the iPhone or iPad, and it really, really works brilliantly. Um, you can get it also on your um, Mac as well. Snapseed is the one to go to first. Clean up the images brighten them, do things with it and everything else. Photo Forge 2, as I say, Blender for blending images together. Photor, I'm starting, just starting to use a bit more of. Uh, these are what I call my grungy apps. So you've got Blur FX, which I said before, uh, Pick Grunger, Grungetastic, uh, Scratch Cam I like a lot, and Distressed FX, uh, again, I like a lot. So I would use some of the others, lens flare occasionally and things like that, as I feel I need them. I don't use them all the time and just use them as, as I would need them. Um, right, <coughs> you saw the one, this is the Hapney Bridge in Dublin. And um, this was the original photograph done on a grey day. And, well, I like that one because the birds were in it. So this is the original picture that was taken. So what I'm going to do is run through more or less. This is all done in PhotoForge, and you can use layers just like you do in Photoshop and everything else. So that was the first original one. Put it into PhotoForge. I think now it's probably PhotoForge 2 is what it was, but then it was PhotoForge. Um, now what I want, down the bottom there, you'll see that you've got all the different um, things you can play around with here. Uh, you can do your uh, FX, that'll give you different effects. Your, um, you can crop it, you can oh, go back on it, you can put layers into it, and you can adjust it. So the next one for me was to crop. So opened up the crop tool and um, cropped it down to a square, took out the buildings behind it there and left it at that. So that, that gave me that image, and then it was a case of playing around with this here. So I quite like on this here, a lot of these other ones to the side, but when you click on the FX, all these things come up, but there is PopCam, and PopCam gives you an awful lot more, a range of whole things that you can play around with onto this here. And there at the bottom is what um, you can get whenever you've got PopCam. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so, what you have, you can your film 
uh, that will give you different effects. There's lenses that will give you different effects. Flash, adding flash in. There's like darkroom stuff. There's um, textures with papers. There's frames. Lots of things there to really have fun with. So the first thing I went looking for was uh, paper. I'd see putting that into it and played around with a couple of those. I decided on that one in the end and uh, so left that one on there. Next thing was going into some of the film and you have a whole range of those. So that was Color Max Cool. I tried that one. Then I moved on to uh, the darkroom stuff and that had a washed out effect or it may have had sepia. There's so many different things there again as well. Then I put a frame around it and um, uh, that gave me that nice, uh, I like frames like that a lot of times, so that gave that sort of feel. And then what I did was to save that one down to the photo album. Um, and then what I wanted to do now is I opened it up again, the same image um, in the photo for but this time I totally changed the colouring so that it was more orange. And then whenever you go into photo forge you can do layers you see at the bottom there's layers and then when you uh, put a layer in go click on new layer and you can bring in a, another photograph you see there so I brought in the original photograph again so that was on top of that and then what I would then do on there is create a mask um, oh, I, can't, I can't even remember which one it is probably the bottom one there but anyway create a mask that gives you that sort of effect and then you can use your pencil or brush and you can go in very very close and start rubbing away your brush size, brush color, brush hardness, everything else is there for you and that's what you would end up with. Um, so that's what you should have seen the very first time, although that's not quite uh, finished, there's a few remarks on it and things like that. But um, that shows you what you can do uh, with PhotoForge and I think uh, a lot of the other apps now will do very very much the same sort of thing so I think you can find that uh, there's an awful lot of experimentation and there are, there's an awful lot of help on the internet as well for people who are trying to do these things. Um, I'm having the time of my life doing this, this here, totally rejuvenated my photography and um, I couldn't do it without my iPhone, so um, and I hope you know a lot are all enjoying it as well. So there's the finished picture there. So I think actually that um, yeah oh sorry <laughs> I've come off there by mistake. Anyway, um, sorry I've come back onto there. Uh, right back onto the slide. So. Right, so I think that's me for the moment. J Jerry, that was absolutely brilliant. Thank, thank you so much. We've got loads of questions going on. I'm, I'm going to do some questions between uh, myself and Jay's going to do some as well. Jay's a, uh, a big fan of your work and kind of Jay shoots a lot of iPhoneography. I've been doing some posts, in fact, just actually on the chat, and uh, we got inspired just actually while watching the stuff, in fact. So on our Facebook page, on the Photographer Academy, we're putting a little bit of our iPhone phonography, and... Um, if you'd like to share one of your iPhone images with us, anybody's online with us in in the next few hours, get an iPhone image up, and we're going to do a little bit of a, a kind of competition. They're going to win a two-day workshop with uh, with me uh, next year. So uh, again, that's a kind of a quickie. So we'll be posting that at the end of Jerry's kind of event. But Jerry, that was ab absolutely brilliant. Uh, and uh, remember, if you're looking to check out more of uh, Jerry's work, I've sent through those uh, links through you just just then on the chat at the chat room. Um, but you can get there by going going to iphone-art.co.uk uh, with it, otherwise we'll kind of post that on our Facebook later on anyway. Um, Jerry, thanks so much, it was brilliant. Um, ab absolutely enjoyed looking at your images and hearing your kind of tales on it and things really. Um, I've got some questions uh, straight off the bat, in fact these que questions were through even before we went live today, so uh, we've got some going straight away. So. Uh, in short, how how would you say that somebody could go out about selling some of their iPhoneography or, or mobile I images as such? Any ideas how they could make some money out of it? Oh, I'm still working on that one. Um, it's it's not well. You, you can be lucky or unlucky. Um, I've sold a few 
and from local restaurant, good quality restaurant, and they had some of mine on the wall, and they've been selling a few. I sold a few at exhibitions, but I, I, I have not, I think I've only sold one off my website. Great. Um, I think a great idea would be, you know, you just mentioned about rest, restaurants, kind of the local cafes, the small little ones are always looking for something over their wall. If if you don't get too greedy and you can find some kind of realistically priced frames, I mean, that's a great way to start if you're exhibiting in, in Christmas fairs coming up and so on. Just don't invest into a huge amount of money of frames. Uh, one of the great uh, the great things that we're seeing more and more in the, U, uh, the, the UK now is photographers selling their photography, you know, in the likes of kind of weekend um, kind of uh, fairs and everything else with it. So watch out for that. I think but I, I definitely feel this mix of photography and art is really actually on the sell and uh, well done for that. I was really impressed that you'd hear on that. Accessory wise, what, uh, what lenses do you use? Can you recap on that? Uh, what lens am I using? Yeah, do you use uh, any lenses on front of the iPhone itself? Oh, yes. Well, I know, I know there's Oloclip and uh, variations on that and Oloclip seems to get a lot of um, great publicity. I, I actually didn't buy, I was thinking of upgrading at one point and I thought, well, I don't want to get all the clip for a, a 4 and I don't want to get it for the 5 and maybe in case the 5S is different. So I didn't bother, but what I ended up buying was quite a cheap reset from um, of, uh, Amazon or eBay and uh, it's just like a tie clip almost that clips onto the front of the lens and uh, it's great, it does work and it does give the wide angle and I have used it. Um, but I tend, I tend to almost forget about it sometimes, you know, and I end up wandering around or walking backwards or something, you know, to get the, the image in. But, uh, yeah, I mean, Oloclip's very, very good. Uh, everybody seems to recommend them. Brilliant. I know that Jay uh, invested into the I, uh, the iPro lenses, Jay, was it? But, um, Yes, I, I, but they didn't do it for five and things really, which was a bit of a shame. He's, he was just saying off air, air then. Um, funny enough, we had a e, an email through today um, on about the Sony. Um, just just for those actually on online with us and things. Really, let me uh, try and find the page. I know I got it. Here we go. Let me show my screen to you again. Um, I've got the uh, again. It's the I'll kind of just copy that and put it into the chat room for you. Can you see that now, Jay? Is that live? Yeah, brilliant. Uh, Jay, Jay knew about this. I didn't. Um, but uh, this uh, new little kind of lens that uh, looks amazing. It's a wireless uh, kind of addition to your any phone, it looks like. And it basically just goes on towards the front um, of pretty much any mobile device. And it just kind of lays flat on there and that looks amazing in fact so uh, watch out for that in fact the lens itself is the camera at uh, the camera the phone is just the viewer as far as Jay was kind of saying but I've posted that out you can go and check that out yourself and so on with it anything you want to jump in with that Jay for a minute uh, from what I understand and the research that I've been doing, um, it is a standalone camera that attaches to a smartphone. And so the camera is actually inbuilt into the lens system, and then you can either I've just got an inbuilt Wi-Fi that will allow then the camera to talk to your phone and turn your phone into a viewer, and you can also then use your phone to uh, save the images. But I believe there's also an internal uh, save system in there as well. Uh, I'm definitely going to be doing some homework and considering buying one myself. Yeah, actually, I think I saw something like that. I didn't read about it, but I think I saw the headline of that. It, it's just by coincidence. It's, it, it arrived on my uh, email box this morning. I was like, oh, God, I've got to bring that up kind of thing with it, because obviously, I mean, one of the biggest troubles is making sure that you can move them from phone to phone and not just be specific yes. with it. That's okay, true. you mentioned some of the apps that, uh, that you use. Which is your most fav uh, your favorite app? Well, I suppose, um, uh, being a Square fanatic in ways, I tend to run to Hipstamatic for an awful lot of them, even if they're straight uh, pictures, whether it's just black and white. I mean, uh, I listed down here on Hipstamatic that um, some of the things that I would uh, use, hang on, uh, wrong bit of paper, um, John S. or Jane Lens with a black keys, black and white film, or a Foxy Lens with black keys, super grain, and Tinto 180 plus seat height plate, 
and the Tinto 184 plus black keys, black and white. They're, they're sort of ones that I have in my favorites folder on Hipstamatic, and I'll flick between them. But there are so many variations, and what you can do with Hipstamatic is, is really very good. Um, Brilliant. Oh, sorry, Brilliant. the other thing is Top Camera and 645 Pro. They would be other ones that I'm very fond of. Jay, have you got a favorite app at all that you use? Oh, um, I suppose uh, my favorite my favorite app. Yeah, Snapseed is one of one that I would say that I I use nearly for every picture because what's happening is that you want my favorite app when I first started. I what is it? I favoured uh, Hipster Man to that and didn't use any. Use, but uh, I have now actually become a Snapseed convert, and I shoot most of my images through the Camera Awesome app to start with, just so I can adjust the focus and exposure. Um, yeah. But I find that everything that I can create, I create at the moment, is through Snapseed. However, seeing Jerry's presentation today, I think I'm going to be spending quite a few pounds this evening on some new apps, and definitely starting playing on some new combinations there. You, you know, you know the amazing thing that um, you you start to do whenever you um, you, you buy an app for six nine p, and then you see somebody selling an app for one pound forty nine or two pounds forty nine, and you busy think, oh dear, I don't know whether to buy that or not. It's so expensive. Um, you, you have to catch yourself on realizing how cheap these really are. Um, and it's worthwhile buying uh, more and more. And then what you can do with that is you can play around with an with an awful lot of uh, uh, apps and uh, uh, that you wouldn't normally play around with at all. Brilliant. Um, as far as uh, one of the questions going through, do you use um, any LED lighting or anything as additional lighting if you're doing still lifes? Sorry, say that again. Do you use any additional lighting when you're photographing the likes of still life photography, like LEDs? Um, oh well, um, I, I, well that, the one still light really was the flowers, um, and that was just sunlight. But occasionally it doesn't. If you can do it, but if you've got your phone on a tripod, yes, you can bring in a reflector, the same way you would do with normal photography. Think of that's. It, just because it's an iPhone doesn't mean to say you have to forget all the traditional values that you're brought up with. Um, I, you can do a lot with it, but if you can help with the original image in the first place, it does help. Um, we've talked about you gaining your fellowship with the BIPP uh, with your iPhone for not, uh, photography alone. What, what, uh, what was their kind of reaction? The reaction generally has been um, really, really good from anybody or most people that I've uh, ever spoken to about it. The, um, uh, there was one comment um, whenever it was got, and then somebody pointed it out to me that on one of these websites, they said, uh, well, imagine the BIPP giving a, um, a fellowship for um, um, pictures like that, a zillion kids could have done that, you know, nothing special. And yes, um, I can see where that person's coming from and what they're thinking about because lots of people are doing things and everything else. But apart from the, um, the general feel uh, I have had back is that um, people are, are really taken with it. I mean, even getting the Peter Grusin Award with it as well which actually surprised me greatly um, because a number of panels in the BIPP are nominated for the best fellowship panel and that I got it for that as well. I also got it originally for my um, uh, original black and white panel in 1999. That's the boasting part over by the way. <laughs> but um, the, uh, um, so I was really surprised, and, and one of the judges had said, I said to him, I was surprised, and he said, why? He says, no, he says, all the judges were absolutely blown away by it. So, you know, some, it's like everything else. You don't appreciate your own photographs sometimes. You might like them, but you don't necessarily know the impact that it's giving other people.
And starting to put a body of work together is a key thing as well. It starts to be a collection then instead of just a, an iPhone photograph, isn't it? It looks like a style. It looks like a, a presentation of your work. And if you never get the chance to do a small exhibitions, even from on your website and things, really, I keep telling off Jay, uh, the video guy for this, I'm trying to get, encourage him to actually go through our qualifications with it because uh, I'd love to actually see some of his work because it's, it's pretty outstanding at times as well. Jay, uh, are you going to pick up the questions from now? Because that's my kind of uh, basic questions I've got there. I'm going to hand, I'm going to hand you over to Jay and uh, Jay's going to continue on with the questions, Jerry. Okay, cheers. Uh, hi, Jerry. A few people have already been uh, influenced by this PhotoForge, but it does look like, and I've just had a look for it, that it's, been, it's gone. Um, so do you have anything that is similar? Supposedly it's been bought by Yahoo, and they haven't reissued it as yet. Uh, something similar? Um, right, well, um, let's see here. If you go through... Um, I'm just looking at what I've written down here, uh, ones that I like, um, and getting some, they, they, there's, hmm, let's see, trying to find one that does it, this is why I'm saying sometimes they're better with two, two or three apps, things that I would use would be things like Photo Toaster, um, says, um, let's see the other ones here. Pick Grunger I've mentioned, Distressed FX. Distressed FX is quite good and there's another one out that I got on my iPad, Mex Mextures, M-E-X-T-U-R-E-S, -E that's great for, for textures and things like that. Uh, Filter Storm, the the Muku Hanga, which is M O K U H A N G A, I think. If you let me look at my um, uh, iPad here a second, I'll soon tell you. Um, just, just while you're finding that, Jerry, I think there's a nice point that's just come up that I'll reiterate. I mean, obviously, we've been talking today about the iPhones, and obviously, you're an iPhone user. Yeah. <laughs> Mark and I are iPhone users, but we can't deny the amount of smartphone users, and not everybody has an iPhone. The majority of these great apps, obviously, the, the majority of them do seem to be unfortunately available for the iPhone. A lot more is developed for Apple than the smartphones. However, all of it is definitely worth. Well, I'll be posting a list of uh, Jerry's apps and the stuff that we use here later on our Facebook page, the Photographer Academy Facebook page. But just search all these because there will be versions on your phones, uh, on your smartphones. And again, as Jerry's reiterated, and much like Mark and I do here is that there's the element of play, you need, you need to, you look at these apps, you see what they do, you read the information, and then you've just got to try it, and as Jerry did point out, some of them, you know, they're not that expensive, um, but look at the reviews, that's what I do on the, when the Apple ones come out, see what the star rating is, and just see if it's going to do something that I want it to do, and if it's reasonably priced, then I'm going to have a go. There is an element of play, and as you, end, as you start to understand the apps, as Jerry's done and shown you today, you encourage multiple layers and using the different apps to finish the effects. So I probably use a maximum of three apps, but I'm most certainly going to be adding at least five or six more apps to my repertoire tonight when I get home. I think. I think. Sorry, Jerry. Good. Back to you, mate. No, sorry. I think this is what it is. That it, it is a case of experimentation, playing around. Um, it, it, what you want to do is take inspiration from other people, but don't copy them. If you know what I mean. Um, you get your inspiration and then work your own vision and try and do things uh, that that are a change. That's the way I've worked through it. I, I am online through Twitter or Facebook or um, Scoop It or something and I'm getting uh, things coming into me all the time from different people and um, you know somebody's done something and there I mean there are some really talented people out there really, really talented. I, I, I stand amazed at what they can produce. Um, and sometimes I wish I had their vision as well. So there's a lot of influence out there. Look at it. Uh, one, of the, one of the wee things that uh, to look at I thought was uh, the app Whisperer. Um, Joanne Carter, she runs that and that's online and there's always a lot of tutorials and there's a lot of information coming through there. Um, brilliant. Also as well for people who want um, books, um, I'm trying to remember here now, I didn't write this down, there's a series of um, 
let's see, I'm sure I have it here, all my, um, uh, oh, yes, I am obsessed, now, uh, App Alchemy is um, by uh, Dan, Dan Marco Lina, M-A-R-C, M-A-R-C-O-L-I-N-A, -A, I think that's it, go and look on there, you can buy his book, um, I'm not getting any money out of this, by the way, so, um, but, um, look on there, get his book, um, he does online tutorials as well, and his book's great, because you can do a scan on it, and it takes you to a video of how to do things. This, <coughs> sorry, this will give you a, an idea of where to start from, and things you can try, and different things you can do. So, uh, that would be a good, a good starting thing for people as well. Jerry, that's brilliant. Thank you so, so much. It's been a great, great um, afternoon with you. And uh, I, I'm sure that you've kind of influenced not only Jay and I to go out and shoot even more. Uh, I mean, we're addicts anyway, as you, you might be aware of. Uh, but basically, um, I'm sure it's kind of influenced all those out there. Uh, as I said, we've just put a special now up on a, uh, the Facebook page. So let's see some of your uh, photographs, your mobile images. Make, uh, make sure they're shot on your phone of some kind and obviously show us your manipulations and everything else. Post them onto the Facebook. That's the facebook.com forward slash the Photographer Academy and uh, by tomorrow morning one of you will have won a two-day a two workshop with us, a special workshop over in uh, the UK next year with us. So uh, again, watch out for that. Jerry, I'd just like to actually say thank you, thank you, thank you from us all. Um, because, uh, as I said, we, it's, it's been great to actually see some of your work. It's great to see uh, a groundbreaking photographer as well, kind of putting stuff in for the competitions and qualifications with it and kind of it not being snubbed and so on. Uh, it still amazes me that the iPhones have a higher pixel than I paid for 17 grand for a 2 megapixel camera back in 1997. Uh, <laughs> it tickles me. It, it tickles me on, on how things have changed and everything else with it. And I hope that you guys have enjoyed Jerry's inspiration for us, uh, w with us today. Remember, we've recorded it. So um, if you haven't been able to watch it all, you've just joined us late, it'll be on the Photographer Academy website uh, from around about Monday of next week. And you'll be watching it on Freeview for a week. Um, and then it's just available to the members. So Jerry, from myself and Jay and the rest of the Photographer Academy crew, thank you so, so much for sharing your work you with us. And we look forward to seeing more in the future. Uh, the future. Thank you very much indeed for having me, and I really did enjoy it too. Brilliant. Thanks again, Jerry. We'll see you soon. All right. All the best. Cheers now. So Bye. thanks. Thanks, guys. That's the end of today's webinar. Uh, remember that we've got a photo critique on the, third, uh, the 30th of September. Um, it's the, if you're a member of the Photographer Academy and photo training for you, you can still put your Im images in. It's not too late. Um, otherwise, we're going to be back with loads of webinars. In fact, it looks, looking at my board here, like we've got two, four. We've got about five webinars uh, with, diff with different photographers during October, October. Some of them at lunchtime. We'll try and keep them to the hour so you don't get in trouble. Take care. Have a great day. See you soon. Bye-bye.